Welcome along guys. Well look at this beautiful red Italian which I'm going to be riding for the next week. This is the brand new 2020 Panigale V4S. An absolute beautiful machine. Now this is a first ride review. This is going to be my first impressions of riding this bike. I've literally been a hundred yards on it borrowed it from Ducati UK just around the corner. So this is really a first impressions review. I will be following this up with a full review of this machine, an in-depth review. But for this one, we're gonna jump in, jump on even, and I'm gonna give you my first impressions of the beautiful Panigale V4S. stop touching it <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful fully waxed ready to go oh she's she's lovely this year it's got wings it's got the uh, the basically last year's v4r bodywork with the shark grills the wings this one being the s model has the full electronic ec2 olin system front and rear this has the marchesini forged alloy wheels, Stylema calipers. <laughs> it's an absolutely incredible machine. And I'm gonna jump on. Oh. Oh, listen to it. How are they so loud? I think Ducati UK must take the baffles out or something. This is really, really loud. First gear, wee clutch bites early. Already I can tell it is absolutely lovely. I love the way your legs fit around the tank. The pegs aren't that high, they're okay. It's a bit of a stretch forward to the handlebars though, but because you're nicely tucked in and sculpted around the tank, I think you can actually take your weight around the tank area because that's what you should be doing anyway. You shouldn't be really taking the weight on your wrists. <laughs> oh, it's got some pickup. Well, first impressions is it, it seems a bit of a pussycat. Throttle response seems nice. The quick shifter and blipper's nice. They say a little bit of weight on the wrist, but it's not too bad. Your foot pegs are in a reasonable position, not too high. Suspension actually seems quite compliant. It doesn't seem too ridiculously hard seems quite comfortable if anything. Front brake feels nice. Brembo Stylemas, all that gubbins. Good bit of mid-range. Picks up nicely there. Very stable. The front wheel wasn't even really trying to come up then. It seems a lot of inherent stability. And that's what I found with the Street Fighter as well. Oh, a little bit there comes, <laughs> comes out there a little bit but it feels stable. Now this will be a, got quite a good test because I'm coming back on all of the back roads. These roads are going to be pretty rough. So it's going to point out straight away how much road do you want, Mr. Tractor? It's going to point out straight away, you know, any shortfalls in the suspension because this is going to be quite a rough ride. Yeah, the suspension seems quite soft. It seems to be quite a lot of movement quite compliant, soaking those bumps up. I was expecting it to be very hard. Other EC2 systems I've ridden, like the new Brutale 1100, for example, I'll put a card at the top there, that, that was rock hard. This is smooth. I don't know if they've got this set. The bike's in sport, which should also adjust the suspension, but at the moment, first impressions is it's really comfortable. Quick shifter is super smooth. It's not a very nice up and down. It's not particularly aggressive. It's not an aggressive quick shift. It's quite a slow, smooth. Look at that. Moving the lever up and down, it's precise. There's no, there's no movement in the actual lever itself. It's just very precise. Clicks into gear. Lovely action to the actual gear lever. I like that. Yeah, 
really nice grip shifter. The manners are lovely. Consider we're in sport mode, this manners are pretty nice. I mean, this is first gear. The throttle's nice. There's no sort of snatchiness. Even the same first. If you go a bit higher, the motor seems tractable, low down the rev range. Yeah, there, there's, there's no dramas about it being a pain in traffic, I don't think. You feel at home on it straight away, I'd say. There is a lot of weight on your wrist, though. I think there's more than the H2, and that was I thought that was quite bad. Very compliant suspension, I'll say again, that is... That makes it a joy, actually, even over these really bumpy back roads. It still it feels quite quite soft. The whole thing feels quite soft. I mean in a good way, you know, it's not all hard and aggressive. It feels it feels quite soft and usable. I think what these also do is because of that temperature, because you've got that exhaust that you've got the exhaust and you've got the cylinder right under your seat, your twin banker cylinders. What these actually do is in traffic, I think when you're below 15 miles an hour. It actually turns off the rear cylinders, so you know, it cuts the fuel to them, so they don't generate as much heat. So that's quite a clever little thing. We'll see if we can notice that when we come into a town, maybe. But I can certainly feel the heat at the moment. And it's not a particularly hot day today, it's about 22 degrees today. And with jeans on, I can feel it. It's not uncomfortable, it's just, it's just you're just aware of it. a lot of run. Yeah, it's got such shove. And that is the beauty. You know, this engine is really, really responsive. That is one thing you get with the V4. I mean, the double R, when you opened it up, you know, it was a straight, had an amazing amount of torque because of the, because it had the shift cam engine, you know, the variable valve timing, but this is just bang! Loads of grunt. Apparently Ducati have done something to soften off the throttle a little bit on here. And I noticed that on the Street Fighter, where you could tell you're not getting all the torque straight away. There's a sort of build up to it. And I think that makes it a little bit more easier to ride on the road, perhaps. But I think it, the trade-off is perhaps it makes it feel a little bit more disconnected. You can feel it's doing something. It doesn't feel like you've got a one-to-one -one connection to those that throttle body. Very, very easy to overtake. Absolutely instant. There's no waiting for the revs to build up. Absolutely instant instantaneous power instantaneous power turn left sorry I'm also trying to follow the sat nav as well audibly when you do come to the little towns the 30s it's a shame there's no cruise control to now push and <laughs> and rest your arms and stuff but uh, yeah cruise along in the 30 nice enough that's absolutely fine it goes all quiet and then it makes noise again so it's sort of like that could be it's shutting down the the rear bank of cylinders i said about maybe the rear bank of cylinders is now off stop it getting too hot open the throttle up and then it comes back again comfort wise i've been riding half an hour i'm starting to get a little bit of uh, pain in the bum <laughs> I think the seat is actually quite thin. Because you've got quite a lot of weight on your wrist, it's not too bad because you're not carrying all the weight on your ass. The scoop to the tank are great for gripping with your knees and alleviating a bit of weight on the bars. But uh, yeah, it's quite, it's quite a wristy bike. The seat seems quite thin and there's quite a lot of heat. The engine on these is very clever. They've got the counter rotating 
crankshaft. So basically what happens is the whole engine is spinning in the opposite direction to what the wheels are. So the wheels are going that way, the engine is going that way, and that's to try and offset some of that gyroscopic effect by making the engine run in a different direction, which is real, I mean, that's real MotoGP tech. Absolute MotoGP tech. Very clever stuff. And I think that makes the whole bike tur turn quicker, obviously. And I think it makes the bike more stable because on the Street Fighter I borrowed, that was a naked, so you didn't necessarily want that to be too stable. And that was probably my main criticism of that bike, was it was almost too stable too easy to ride and the wheel just didn't want to come up because uh, I don't know what magic Ducati have done to the chassis with 200 horsepower the wheel still didn't want to come up I think as a combination of incredible electronics and just natural stability in the chassis I know they've raised the swinging arm pivot up a little bit on these they've tuned the chassis compared to last year to make it easier to ride and I think more stable let's have him there's no wheelie, there's no, the electronics aren't even flashing at me. I think it's just got that inherent stability. You know, I think on the RSV4, you know, I borrowed the new RSV4 the other week, so I rode that recently. That would be flashing, the electronics would be restricting it, trying to keep the wheel down. I think the, the systems on this, are much more advanced. I think they're starting to show their age a little bit. The electronics on the Tuoni, the electronics on the RSV4. They intervene too much, but it actually slows down your, your forward progress. I think to catch it with this. Oh, the chassis is so good, the electronics are so good. When they're mated together, package is just so stable. Yeah, getting a bit of heat around the old testicles. It's definitely warm. It's definitely a warm bike. It'll be a good a good winter commuter. <laughs> you certainly don't need a heated seat as an option. Let's put it that way. Let's give it some beans. Even, even in first gear, it's not trying to lift the wheel. Even full throttle first gear not trying to wheelie. How have I done that? Oh, it's wet here. We don't want to get it wet, do we? Go again. I think the highlights so far on the bike is the quick shift and blipper. Very, very good. Obviously the look of it. <laughs> it, looks, it looks a million dollars. Which is just as well, because that's how much it costs. It sounds incredible as well absolutely sounds incredible if this is just the standard exhaust i don't know what they've done anything to it if they've taken the baffles out whatever it needs nothing more it sounds amazing also the electronics are incredible and i think the bike stability that's what's standing out as being incredible from my brief ride so far oh, oh god Oh, Jesus Christ! I was airborne. This road is awful. Absolutely awful. I was out of the seats. Yeah, we won't do that again. Nor to 60. It's quick. I just stopped to uh, change for batteries, but the reason you get a bit of heat between your legs is because the rear cylinder is here and obviously your legs are coming around here so the air is coming up into your uh, groin area so you do get a bit of heat from these and of course you've got the exhaust there as well so um, it's a double whammy really a double whammy to the testes I've also got to say a massive thank you to Planet Knox for joining the channel and being a channel sponsor you may have noticed the Knox gear and there's some logos you know at the beginning of the videos recently well they're now an official channel sponsor so I'm, I, wore, I wore their kit anyway but now they give me some more kits so I've got some proper Android gloves but their stuff is so good and I'm so happy to have them on board because their kit is just absolute quality 
I'm not going to bang on about it. I'm not going to say, come and buy this kit. But there will be a little flash up on the screen to say, check out the Knox gear in the description. So I'll link all the kit I'm wearing in the description. And uh, But yeah, massive, massive welcome to Knox for joining the channel. Absolutely brilliant to have them on board. It's brilliant to have quality sponsors on the channel. And Knox is certainly one of them. But anyway, enough of that. Oh, I've just put launch control on now. Well, there we go, guys. I think that's about all I can tell you about this bike, really, from a first impressions ride point of view. I will be doing another full review after the full week of riding this. I'm just hoping the weather's going to play ball. It's getting towards it's mid-September, so it's possible the weather could turn on us at any time. So I'm hoping I'm going to get a decent amount of time riding this, and then I'll bring you another video and let you know what I think to it, how I found it during that week of running this machine. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. Click the subscribe button and if you tick that bell, you'll be notified of all future uploads I make and you'll see it in your YouTube feed. So uh, thanks for watching. Big thanks to Ducati UK for lending me this incredible bike. I mean, this is a 25,000 pound motorcycle. With this electronic suspension and this S model, 25,000 pounds. So massive thanks to Ducati UK for loaning me this and entrusting me this into my care for the next week. But there we go guys, thanks for watching, ride safe and I will see you soon. Cheers guys. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, oh.